Uh, just wait for your face to repixelate. Okay. <laughs> Let's bring this roof to the ground. Hey guys, just a quick note from me before we get going. Uh, you're probably wondering why this episode is so much shorter than all the other producer spotlights. Well, that is because Skype is an absolute bellend. And when we were doing this interview, it just kept cutting out, our connection was awful, and as you will see, we had some issues with video and audio sync, and it was it just got funny after a while but yeah I've had to cut a lot out because you just couldn't hear what was going on and yeah the questions weren't followed by answers most of the time uh, so in the effort to make it watchable I've had to cut a lot out however what we do have is good um, and there is a slight audio sync issue and volume issue in the first five minutes but it does sort itself out so if you can stick through the first five minutes you will be fine and uh, also another reason why it was quite short was because it, he was using his iPhone and I didn't want him to have to stay there like holding it in front of his face like that the whole time uh, so yeah it is a bit shorter but hopefully it's just as sweet and yeah I'll let you get on and enjoy it cheers Hello and uh, welcome to Producer Spotlight episode 4. Today I am joined by Joel Hunt aka Rogue. Hey. Now uh, for those of you who are new to my Producer Spotlight, um, I'm just going to reiterate that some of the questions will be about actual production but um, there's also going to be a lot of uh, more varied questions that aren't focused on producing so that you can get to know the guy behind the music as well as how he makes it. So uh, let's start with the basics. Um, how old were you when you started you know, making music? Uh, well, since I was basically four or something, um, I got a keyboard for Christmas one time and uh, started playing little tunes and but um, I uh, started really kind of getting interested in music when I was in year seven, just like when I was 11 or 12. And I started just learning like keyboard on my own and guitar and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember the first kind of um, music software that I got was in a cereal box. And it, it was like EJ, I think it was called. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I loved that. Uh, so what what are you using nowadays then, and why? Um, I'm using FL Studio, and that's because that's what I was. Well, my my friend gave me um, FL Studio when I was like in year twelve or something. I was when I was like seventeen, and um, yeah, I just started messing around on it, and that's what I stuck with. Um, what what made you choose the name Rogue? Um, well basically I was I was making music as just Joel and, and I wasn't releasing it or anything I was just kind of just making music and, and then uh, I thought right I'm going to make an artist profile and I was just, just trying to search for a name for about a week and then I just I saw it and I just thought there's a lot of people called Rogue already but I was like I'll beat them <laughs> you'll be the Rogue <laughs> yeah and so when, when did um when did the whole yeah. Monster Cat thing happen? Like, when did they get in touch with you? Uh, well, I was I was releasing tracks and I was building up my fan base and um, uh, Tristan kind of uh, messaged me and he was like asking if he wanted to do a if I wanted to do a collab with him and I didn't know who he was and I was like um, no, I'm not too sure I haven't done any collabs with anyone so I kind of. I <laughs> kind of like ignored him a little bit and then he uh, he was just kept messaging me and messaging me like let's do a collab let's do a collab yeah. and then I figured out he was on Monster Cat as well I was like whoa and then um, at the same time the, the manager for Monster Cat was um, emailing me at the, at the same time so I sent a couple of tracks um, yes yeah, so it all kind of fell into place 
and I released a track on Monster Cat with Tristan, and then from there I released a load of tracks. And that's where I am today. Yeah, I mean, your uh, the collaboration with Tristan, the oh, what's the EP called? Um, uh, you're not gonna help. Catalyst, the Catalyst EP. That was it. Uh, yeah, I love that. That's amazing. Um, now, I think your latest single is Nightfall, is that right? Yeah, that's the last one. And obviously that did really well on Beatport, so would, would you say that's your best song, or is it just your latest? Um, I'm not really sure what my best song is. There, there are a few, a few that stand out, and I think that um, we're more successful with uh, the fans. Hmm. Um, I would say, production-wise, it's my best one that I've released, like, quality-wise. Um, I'm not really sure what my, my actual best song is. Do you have, it's like... Free. It's, up to, it's up to the people who are listening. Yeah. Yes. Do you have a, a favourite or anything like that? Um, I'm really quite proud of um, Air, Summer Chords which is um, one that I just released on my own that seems to get a lot of um, a lot of what's the word people liked it <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good feedback uh, yeah and, um, I've I've actually uh, remade that and it's going to be going on my, my um, EP that's coming out in a couple of months great there you go EP coming out you heard it heard it here yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, now, you're one of the few producers that I follow who hasn't actually gone in for the Damian Marley and Skrillex remix contest. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering, was there a specific reason for that, or? Uh, kind of. Uh, I sort of start. I saw the remix competition and I and I thought I saw a few remixes and I was I was like right okay this is going to be pretty big and literally everyone is going to enter it so I was like um maybe I shouldn't enter it just because everyone's going to be remixing it I don't really want to follow the crowd kind of thing okay yeah that's fair enough even though it could be could be big and I could have done well. I don't. I don't know. But also, um, I, even though I like I like the tune, I couldn't really um, imagine what my version would be like. Yeah, uh, it, it didn't click like that. So, right. Yeah, I um, I asked my uh, some of my Facebook page people uh, what uh, questions they wanted me to ask you, and uh, what the one that stood out for me was uh, from a Mr. Will Ayrton who asked. Would you ever do a collaboration with Carly Rae Jepsen? Hmm. She's got a nice voice. And I guess that that would, obviously in promotional terms, would get me a lot of attention. Yeah, definitely. But on, I guess, I guess with, on moral, on the moral side of things, probably, probably not, because it just be, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really make sense. <laughs> you, you'd feel a bit dirty for doing it, would you? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, when uh, when did you first get into the whole dubstep and EDM scene? Um, a few years ago, um, and Tishikari brought out their second album, their band, and um, I I really liked it. And I, I was like, what is that kind of sound that they've got going? And apparently it was dubstep. I don't think it's it was, but my friend told me it was dubstep. So I was checking out <laughs> dubstep. And um, I really like it. And uh, yeah, I just, I appreciated the style and I appreciated how it was made. And I was like, I don't, how on earth do they make those noises yeah. and stuff? So I was like, that's really cool. And yeah, basically... I started trying it out myself. 
That was definitely a part of it for me as well, the, high, the whole kind of curiosity into how all these new sounds were being made and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, do you remember what the first uh, actual dubstep song was then that you that you heard? Because I don't think we can count Enter Shikari. No. Um, I think it was this... I'm not sure who it was by, but it had like a sample saying um, something about milk. It was like, <laughs> it, could, it could be our milk. Um, no milk could ever be our milk. And then it was like... Blah, 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 blah. And I was like... Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very obscure uh, first song to hear. It sounds like yeah. some kind of joke remix of a like Cravendale advert or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the sample was from either. I was just, I just, I just found it interesting though. Yeah, it's kind of back in the in the early days of dubstep when it was kind of a lot more dark and minimal. Yeah, but yeah, it was that that type of song. I see. I did it the other way round. I I started off with the more, um, I guess you'd call it what what what's nowadays more mainstream dubstep, and then I got yeah. backtracked into the kind of older Rusko and Scream and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, now your 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 music, you don't just kind of create dubstep. It's like lots of genres uh, that you go mm. into. Um, so if if you could take any song from all time and release it as your own. What song would you want? Mm, oh, that is, that's a tough one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> put you on the spot there. Any any genre, yeah, ever. Yeah, any Just, genre. Um, it would probably be a, one of a Muse song, because I really love Muse. And I just think that they're, that they're geniuses. I don't know how they, yeah. how they do it, but... Um, they, one of their old tracks, uh, "Plug In Baby" or, or um, uh, "Plug In Baby" Newborn. was my favourite song for about five years. Yeah, <laughs> mine. And "Newborn" as well. Yeah, newborn. either one of those. I, I guess really when you look back at songs like that, it does. You can kind of see like a almost the the dubstepy style to it, with the huge emphasis on the bass, with yeah. particularly "Newborn" like that definitely has a drop to it I guess you could say yeah definitely yeah it's got a build up and a drop but yeah with with Muse as well I remember I went to see them at Wembley uh, in would have been about 2010 I think it was um, but yeah I remember coming away afterwards and just being in awe of Matt Bellamy just like how are you that <laughs> talented at everything <laughs> seriously he's one of the one of the greats definitely. in my eyes um, now you obviously we talked about your collaboration with Tristan just now, but um, what? Who would you work with if you could work with any producer? Who would who would it be? I would like to collaborate with um, Maddian because he's melodic. There's the the melodies in his music are just insane, and his production quality is insane. And I'd just like to learn a lot of things off him as well. Yeah, but um, I love it. I love his music, and I, I just think he's he's awesome. So I would collaborate with Matt Dean. He's a, he's a brilliant example of the whole age is no relevance to skill. Mm. Like I, I remember finding out how young he yeah. was because um, I all I knew of him was the I'd seen the dance video for. Oh, which one's the one with the dance video? The one with the guy doing crazy dancing, that, and I, I assumed that just because the guy in the video was, I don't know, like 30, 40, I assumed that Maddian himself was obviously in that kind of age group, and then I found out like a couple of months later yeah. how young he was, and it just blew my mind. Um, yeah, he's yeah. so young, it's unreal. <laughs> and like the music he makes is so kind of classy and that you just yeah. automatically assume that he must have like a few years behind him. Mm. Um, now I've, I've noticed from a fair few posts on your Facebook that you're a bit of a gamer into Skyrim and that I, I like Skyrim yeah <laughs> so do, are there any other games that you're looking forward to this year or you just um, I saw I saw a trailer to um, oh my word I can't even think what it's called now Dishonored oh, by any chance Dishonored is that it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
and I was like, whoa, whoa that's going to be awesome. <laughs> Looks kind of like Skyrim and Bioshock have had a baby, and oh, <laughs> I can't wait for it. Yeah, it looks so good. Yeah, so um, now Muse were amazing live, but um, who who would your favourite act be to see live? Other than Muse. Yeah, other than Muse. <laughs> um, uh, probably either Enter Shikari or. Uh, I actually really like uh, the Devil Wears Prada. What's what sort of style are they? Uh, like um, hardcore metal, screamy, but it's really good. Cool, I'll, I'll check that out. It's heavy, it's heavy stuff. I think uh, most people who uh, I've spoken to about dubstep, they all went through the same like progression of music. Like they went from metal to dubstep to drum and bass and like electro, and it all kind of. Everyone has the same pattern. Yeah, it's almost it's almost the same for me. I was into kind of like indie music, and then I was into like rock, and then into metal. If they one day decided to make Rogue the movie, who would you <laughs> cast to play yourself in it? Uh, <laughs> I don't, well, someone who looks like me, I guess. <laughs> oh, actually, I reckon the the guy who who was in the Ultimate Spider Man would yeah would uh I can see that could probably do it. I reckon if he can do a British accent, yeah, bit risky. <laughs> so, uh, if you had to be stuck in an elevator for twenty four hours with someone, who would you want it to be? Um, probably one of my friends, but if we're talking like celebrities, I'd say, uh, probably, again, someone with, someone with production knowledge that could just tell me everything they know. <laughs> yeah. I've got this real, like, hunger to, to know more about producing and, um, if it was like, oh yeah, even dare I say it, Skrillex, like, so that he could just tell me everything that he knows. <laughs> yeah. See, for me, I'd if like I was going to be kind of taken under a producer's wing and given all their secrets or whatever and taught as their protege, uh, I'd have to go with Noisier just because Noisier. they're so insanely good at everything. Yeah. Um. So, uh, all right. If if you uh, were given a superpower choice and you could either teleport or fly, which one would you go for? Ooh, flying. I thought I'd go for flying because it's just it'd be awesome, wouldn't it? It's what it's like man's dream, isn't it, to fly? Yeah, yeah. That would be so cool. Plus, just you... like I could just be like, right, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go to Canada now, see in a, see in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, if if there was a fire in your house and you could only save three things, what would you save? My laptop, um, my microphone, and my phone. Okay. Yeah. They're the most... They're the things I use the most. <laughs> yeah, probably the most expensive as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, my friend uh, had his laptop stolen the other day, and I was just like imagining if it was me, how destroyed I would be. Like my entire <laughs> music collection gone. Oh, seriously. <laughs> like I, I'm, when I'm walking, sometimes I, I'm walking like through town um, with my laptop because I've been to my friend's house and I take it around with me so I can just produce when I feel like it. Yeah. And um, I was just thinking, imagine if this got stolen from me, I'd I'd actually defend it with my life. Like, <laughs> if someone tried to take it from me, yeah, I'd fight them down, with, which I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do usually. I'm not usually a fighter, but I would. I'd kick their ass. That's the thing when you put so much, so many hours of and hours of effort into building up like a music collection and that kind of thing. 
Uh, it's my it's it's my projects really. It's my, yeah. Um, the tracks I'm working on and stuff. That it just be, I'll just be no, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> it's when it gets stolen and then someone else releases it as their own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, hopefully I'll be able to edit that um, so that it's not completely confusing. Um, but, yeah, thanks thanks very much for joining me. No problem, man. And, uh, yeah, because, I, I mean, I'll be honest, when I sent you the message, I, I didn't expect uh, to get a reply. So, yeah, I was really happy, and it's a pleasure to get to know you better. And you? Brilliant. Well, I, I saw your channel, and I was like, oh, it's well it's well put together it's a nice channel so <laughs> thank you I'll, I'll put i have to put that on my uh, beatport profile now like <laughs> approval of rogue <laughs> all right well uh take care mate and uh looking forward to hearing some more tunes from you soon see you later cheers Bye.